Hey guys, and welcome to my Linux Mint review. So, those of you that have been following this channel for any length of time knows that I've got a lot to say about Linux Mint. So I'm going to try and keep this review reasonably short and to the point. This is a review for Linux Mint 17.3, but... Linux Mint keeps such a degree of consistency that a lot of what I'm going to say is going to apply to earlier versions of Linux Mint as well. But this distribution is typical in the stride of Linux Mint in the sense that it picks out what it wants to do and it does it very, very well. Linux Mint is the distribution that I recommend to people switching from Windows. It's user-friendly, it has a conservative desktop um, paradigm, so it's very easy to just pick up and use and customize, but it also has one of the most welcoming communities that I've ever seen in, in the open source community. They are very good at helping new people adjust to Linux, and they're very good and they think very empathically and they're very welcoming. So. For those reasons, I tend to think that Linux Mint is particularly good for people new to Linux. I also feel that um, them basing it on the long-term support release of Ubuntu gives them a degree of stability, which means that you'll get fewer people... Um, you'll, you'll, you'll have fewer early abandoners, you know, people that try Linux and they come across their first hurdle and they throw their arms up in the air and give up. Um, and I think that Linux Mint aims to prevent that type of scenario from happening. And they at least to me, seemed to do a very good job. Now, I tested the beta before it was actually released, and there were a few very, very, very cosmetic errors that you would kind of expect in a beta. Um, but one update um, pretty much fixed that, and this was all before it actually had properly been released. So I can assume that the final release of Linux Mint is going to be as bug-free as it usually is, or at least, like I say, in my experience, because you can always find um, someone on the internet that's found a bug somewhere. But... As a distribution that is geared at something conservative and stable, but also um, welcoming and user-friendly for new Linux users, Linux Mint has those bases covered in spades. I mean, this is a great distribution. 17.3 specifically, but also the ones preceding it. Now, 17.3, the point three means that this is the third Linux Mint based on Ub the current Ubuntu LTS, which is 14.04. Now... The point threes, I think, are going to maybe get a reputation as being perhaps maybe the most polished, but also the ones with the oldest software in the repositories. So the only criticism I can really give about Linux Mint 17.3, and this is probably going to apply to a lot of the point three releases, is that since it's been such a long time since the latest long-term support release of Ubuntu, the software is going to be lacking maybe some of the latest and greatest features. It'll be perfectly usable. You'll be able to play your Steam games and you'll be able to edit your videos. In fact, I used um, Linux Mint as a video editing platform for quite some time because the codecs that came with it um, support um, the MTS video files really, really well, which is what my camera throws out. So um, I, uh, I found Linux Mint to be particularly useful in, the, um, in multimedia specifically. I also found it very easy to get Steam up and running. So... If you're looking for a machine that you don't really want to spend too much time maintaining and you're happy just to have um, maybe some slightly older but more stable software, Linux Mint is right up your street. And you can still play the latest games because it's on the, the games are released on Steam and uh, it has uh, support for GOG games as well. Um, and in regards to third-party software support, the libraries of Ubuntu might not be as big as the libraries of Manjaro, Antergos, Arch. And they're certainly not as big with as those distributions if you add in the Arch user repository as well. But Linux Mint does support the Ubuntu technology of third-party PPAs, uh, which are repositories designed for specific programs or specific groups of programs. That's very good. It's a very good way of getting software like open broadcast software up and running on your machine with relative ease. The problem is if you have a lot of third-party PPAs, you can have dependency issues and you can have problems that are going to be near impossible to solve out solve without replacing one piece of software for another. Um, and even doing that can perhaps, you know, sort of upset the system. So if you have a large number of third-party PPAs, you can run into some clashes. Uh, but other than that... Um, Linux Mint is near enough the perfect Linux distribution for that kind of use case, for you for a low-maintenance machine. Um, and that's about all I've got to say for it. If you're new to Linux, I would recommend Linux Mint. Um, if you want something that you don't really have to maintain too much, I would recommend Linux Mint. If you want something that's easy to use, I would probably recommend Linux Mint. If you want something customizable, Linux Mint. 
You don't have to use either uh, Cinnamon or Mate, despite the fact that they're fantastic desktops. You can use XFCE, KDE. So you've got a lot of options with Linux Mint. But the thing where I think the thing that separates Linux Mint from its parent Ubuntu the most to me is that Ubuntu is produced by Canonical, a big-ish company. Linux Mint is um, provided to us by Linux Mint, a community of people. And a community of people understands the needs of the community that they that it is, whereas a corporation has an agenda to push. Now, it might be an agenda that's aligned with ours, which is fine, and it also might allow distributions to have a decent amount of financial backing. But le then Linux Mint sort of almost takes it um, to another level where they get the benefits of, of the resources that Ubuntu has access to and then still reducing a distribution to a co community distribution with all of that tech uh, in tow, which, um, as far as I'm concerned, you, you get the best of both worlds there. So that's about it for Linux distributions reviews for a while. The next one will probably be next year at some point, uh, but I'm going to be dialing them back a little bit now because having used several distributions for uh, anywhere between one and three weeks has given me a pretty good perspective on the differences between them. To do full reviews for every single iteration of every single distribution is not only going to be boring but it's going to be useless because each iteration of each distribution doesn't actually change that much so so there's that anyway that just means that i'm going to be focusing more on what you can do with these said distributions rather than the distributions themselves so you can look forward to a lot of that feel free to share your experiences with linux mint uh, down in the comments section below that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care.